The six hour on, on Marcus on Monday, uh, three three days later, is he still on track? Yeah, we're fine, you know, uh, making progress, we'll see. Yeah. What do you hope to see uh, <laughs> from the offense in terms of improvement progress this, this weekend? I mean, offense, defense, special teams, it's kind of all the same. You know, we're just, I'm always so anxious to go get the tape after the game uh, and just see who's showing up, who's looking better. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that's why we do this. This is why we coach. This is what we like. We like to put that tape on and say, there it is. And it is hard work during the week. I mean, stuff that we've been working on for a long time, we're still going back and going over. And so it's exciting to see, okay, did we get it right or not? And there's just so many thousands of details that you're trying to sure up. And so, uh, you know, just hoping it just all makes – it's not any one thing. You know, it's not the run game. It's not the kick. It's, it's just all of it. It's that guy making progress, and that's how we kind of look at it. Coach Smith said the other day, you guys, after three games, went back and looked at kind of the offense in general. Maybe, I don't know, sort of paraphrase again, but sort of see what what's going right, what what's not necessarily. I mean, anything surprised you, I guess, in terms of no, the we're, offense? No, we're or? always in the self-scout, okay. you know, to see what we look like and are we missing something and – are we too vanilla? Are we too complicated for ourselves? Uh, so that process never really stops. We're always going to keep it. It always comes back to us. Uh, you know, the opponent's the opponent, and they're going to give us a challenge every week, but it always comes back to us. And so are we coaching them the correct way? Or, you know, are we missing something? And, hey, this mistake keeps showing up. So, yeah. Week three, week 12, it's kind of the same. Is there anything you haven't done in the first three games that you, you expected to do better that you'd like to see show up on Saturday? Um, yeah, there's probably everything, you know. I mean, we're trying to get better at everything, but I think that's not the question. The question is, are we making progress? Um, and I think, you know, we made progress last week, and uh, I think we all know we're only as good as our last game, and so we reload and see where we are in two days. It sounds like Josh Perkins is coming back. What, what do you think he adds to your offensive mix? I mean, I think Josh is a good player, but he's one of the guys that I'm really anxious to see because, you know, like we keep talking about it, practice is one thing and games are a completely different different thing. And I only got to see him in half a game. Right. And so, you know, we looked at tape last year, but I, I didn't study that hard to say, hey, what is this guy all about? We did that on purpose to say, you yeah, we know what we got in general, but everybody's got a clean slate here. So what, are, you know, what can you do for us now? And so we only got a half a game basically out of him, so I'm anxious to get him back and see where he is. A lot of fans look at John Ross's production and, and say, oh, they need to get him the ball more. <laughs> they, need, they need to get Casey Williams the ball more. Yeah. Obviously, that's that's easier said than done. Yeah. But in, in what ways is that easier said than done? What, what are the complications with just trying to get the ball to one guy more? Well, coverage, defense. You know, if they're going to take that away, we're not going to force the ball in there if somebody else is where the ball should go somewhere else because of coverage and and uh, schematics. Uh, now you can hand him the ball, you can get it to him with kick returns, hopefully, those type of things. But, um, and so I think we're doing what we can with John Ross, there's no question. Do we want him to have the ball more? Yes. Do we want Casey to get the ball more? Without question. Um, but that's part of the work in progress thing. You know, what can we do as coaches to help that? What can Casey help to do? And what can the other receivers help to do to be productive, to maybe single him up? Mm -hmm. Have any of the running backs started to separate themselves at all yet, or is it still kind of the same by committee approach? You know, I, I think it's a little bit by committee. Um, I think they're all doing a pretty solid job. Um, you know, I think I think once we start to kind of lean to one guy, somebody else starts to show up and do something. So I don't think we've really kind of separated anybody at this point. Would you like one of those guys too, or two of them maybe? Do you yeah, I mean, yeah, we want somebody to really go, wow, yeah, that solved that for us, yes. But I also think we've got some pretty good players there, and it means that, uh, you know, they're healthy, they're being productive. So it's a yes and no to that right. that question, I guess. Any, you know, you hesitate to talk about injuries, but any update on Ben Reba? Um, you know. Still kind of game time? Is that it, it, it really is. I, I don't know. It's okay. not It's not a surgery thing. It's, he didn't suit up last. Friday we no. thought he was playing. Saturday comes up and not going. So we're trying to, we're kind of all scratching our heads. And it really is kind of a week to week, day by day thing with him. And so, uh, you know, I don't know. We, uh, we talked a lot about punt returns on Monday. But um, how special is it to kind of break one of those? And what does that, what does that take? Yeah, especially for a guy like you, but that's the one thing you kind of do with well, the hands on. Well, what it really takes yeah. 
it takes about 10 guys in front of you doing some really good work. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I always say we, we have some good athletes back there that are pretty courageous, that they'll make some things happen. But if those 10 guys can give us a chance to get something started, we have good confidence that, that those returners will make something happen. But, I, you know, I think everybody's like, oh, wow, you know, that returner. And, yeah, there is some of that. But to get some, it, it is so hard to return punts in college football these days with all the different styles we see. Even if the guy's a traditional punter, yeah. you, you see all the shield. Well, that's that's five to six gunners running down. Where in the old days it's two gunners, mm -hmm. and so it, it's hard. So I think any time we can get our punt returner loose, you know, everybody should stand up and clap loud for not necessarily the returner, but everybody else is yeah. doing a good job to to get that thing started. Do we see? I mean, we know you favor the rugby style. Are we seeing that? Maybe throughout college football. Well, I hate the rugby then. style oh. because it takes the returner out of it. But if we don't want the returner involved in it, we're going to do some of that stuff. Yeah, and so there's you know, multiple formations, uh, you know, multiple styles of rugby kicking uh, on the ground, rugby in the air, rugby cross field. I mean, we could go on and on and uh, different styles of punts. You know, there's knuckleballs, there's all this stuff. Just really kind of, I mean, you watch the NFL game, it is one style. Ball's going up. It's usually a spiral, turn it over. Punt returner can read it. Can you lock down the gunners? If you can, you got a chance for a good return. College football a little different. <laughs> what, what does it say about Dante Pettis? I mean, we talked about him Monday, but for a true freshman to be back there, yeah, you know, in front of 70,000 people and sort of have that confidence in I, him and in himself. I I always want that to be our coaching style. That we'll put a punt returner back there, which is a pretty daunting position. You know, you're back there in front of. Like, there's no hiding there. But I don't care if that's an offensive guard, linebacker, corner. If you're the guy, you're the guy. We have confidence in you, and we'll just develop you. It's not a seniority pecking order ever around here. What is a good return in your eyes? I mean, if he gets X amount of yards, that's a good return. When we get the ball back to the offense, number one, and that might mean hitting the ball hits the ground, but the ball goes back, that's our number one goal. Number two, it's always caught with some sort of technique. And three, we steal some hidden yardage as the game goes on. So it's like yardage is almost gravy nowadays. So. Well, we're trying to we're trying to get some hidden yardage, but hey, they may just keep kicking those ones that we can't we can't field, and we got to be like a you know a counter puncher. We're not going to go out there and take chances unnecessary. The number one goal is the ball goes back to the offense. So with that being said, we have to be very patient. You know, it's like fearless and patient. Those two words for a punt returner, they almost you know they don't go together. They're oxymoronic words, you know, in some ways, and so. We work hard to, you know, you got to be a great decision maker back there because those guys are really aggressive and they want to take some chances, but we got to get the ball back to the offense. A little left field, but it, it looks like, at least publicly, you've gotten a high school player to sign a financial aid agreement. It, what's, why is that in vogue nowadays? Why, why has that become such a, I know Clemson has gotten like almost a dozen guys doing that. Yeah, and so I think it kind of has to do with this early commitment and then the version of the early signing period. I mean, that's, that's my best answer to that. You know, I think that's where a lot of people are wanting to head. A lot of the kids are wanting to head that direction. And I think that's what you're, you know, without a true, this is the date, signing period, you've committed, you're locked in, all those things. This is kind of the next closest thing. Is there, a, is there an actual benefit to the school since it doesn't necessarily bind? The, well, you can have, it changes the communication that you can have with the, with the you know, uh, I guess a commitment. Uh, Prospect, whatever. Okay. Are you allowed to speak publicly about that? I don't know. Let me double check on that for <laughs> okay. myself in hot water. And see those exact, okay. exact reasons, yes. Is that something you'd like to see more of? I like, your to, see an, I like to see guys? an early signing period. Okay. Yeah, without question. I just think there's so many kids that are committed. Now, again, with that being said, the logistics are not quite that easy. I mean, so I've got, you know. Does that mean there's earlier visit times? So we visit kids in the spring. I mean, you move to slide the calendar. I mean, it's not quite as cut and dry as it seems, but uh, I'm hoping we try something uh, because it's just there's so many kids that are committed for so long, and it's, uh, you know, it, again, it turns into kind of a babysitting process. And what I mean by that is you just start using a lot of time and money uh, when kids have been committed for a long time to make sure the guy's still with you. Well, if he's still with you, let him sign. Right. So can you confirm that you received one? Let me okay. just get back to you okay. on that, yeah. Yeah, just to make sure. All right,